Hello, hello. So I have two screens going. I have Facebook over here, hello, <laughs> and Instagram over here. So when you guys see me looking all over the place, just know that there's men. Instagram is saying, you guys can still see me. If you are hopping on live, comment below and say hi. Happy New Year, everyone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you, universe, for the new, fresh energy. Holy shit, we needed it so bad, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. It's beautiful outside right now. It's snowing. It's so magical. It looks like a snow globe. Hello, hi, hi everyone. If you're watching the replay, comment below and say hi as well. I am so excited to finally be doing this. So some of you have heard me talk about this before. If not, you guys know that I love my books. I have been in the self-development game for almost a decade, mostly for myself, I thought, and then I started sharing my journey and my experiences, and it led into coaching and helping people with dreaming and manifesting. So there's been many years of me doing that, and then recently you guys have seen the behind the scenes many of you of Feel My Soul becoming my new baby, and it's been such a magical experience. It was one of the biggest blessings that I had from 2020. So I, it's been so awesome as well that I've seen so many of you starting your new ventures, whether that's doing your own personal development, embracing your own spiritual awakening, or it's so weird to go back and forth on the screens, um, or starting a new business. Many of you have like, you guys have, are thinking so far outside the box. It's so beautiful to watch. Like every time that one of you just get, puts yourselves out there and announces that you're starting something new, like I am celebrating so hard with you. So congratulations. And if you are someone that has been thinking about doing that, I think that this is the greatest time to be taken advantage of the different opportunities we have available for us to be able to start our own ventures, our own businesses, or just diving really, really deep into ourselves. So I am going to start with basically with all the books that I read, you guys. I'm not kidding. I have probably anywhere from like four books to like 10 or 12 books going at one time. So it's very rare where I have a book that is good enough to keep my attention from start to finish, <laughs> but there are, those do exist. I plan on creating a blog for you guys. Many of you are constantly messaging me asking for book recommendations. So what I plan to do is make a list of books and tell you why I love that book. So then if you're looking for um, healing or releasing the past or rewiring your subconscious or you want more of like the scientific facts of the things that we're talking about like manifestation is not just something that is um, you know we can now show scientific proof that it's real right it's in a beautiful time to be alive and the collective consciousness is awakening and there are so many great things that are I feel like finally coming to surface like mainstream <laughs> you guys have you seen my story when we watched the, the new Disney movie soul I like oh my heart was like exploding <laughs> I was like Jazz and I both looked at each other we we're like I can't believe that this is been turned into a cartoon like all the things that we talk about all the time and you know whether people actually believe that those things are actually connected into our real life or they think it's just for an animation movie that's okay it's planting a seed in your subconscious to start opening your eyes to the possibilities that there's more to life than what we can see with our eyes so it's really really exciting really really fun and I know all my students and like all my people are just just super excited about it. So, okay, you guys, a new year. Like I said, I believe that at any point, any second of any day, no matter what has happened, that you can decide to choose again. You can decide that you are going to change your mind on what you are aligning with. And you can, I think I'm just going to look at one screen at a time. So Facebook, I'm probably gonna let you go for a second. <laughs> you guys can hear and two in in, but I'm not gonna make eye contact with you because it's distracting me. If you guys have any questions or comments, 
please comment them below. Thank you. Isn't this sweater awesome? I pretty much live in it. <laughs> it's so comfortable and it's so, oh, so me. Um, it's so us. So feel my soul brand, right? That's another thing I'd love to do is design clothing one day. Okay. So you guys just have to go listen or be able to keep up with my tangents and my squirrels. Many of you are used to this. <laughs> Just let it flow. There is no perfection going on here anymore. I am a recovering perfectionist. So that's how you guys get the real me. Um, okay, I don't even remember what exactly what I was talking about. But for the oh, for the new year, I believe that you can change at any point. So like if you realize that you're in a shitty mood and you're probably the one causing the shitstorm going on in your life, you can take a moment to pause, disconnect release the energetic or the charge, the momentum that you have behind whatever clusterfuck is going on and decide that you are going to start telling yourself a new story. So um, I have a really good example of this. I was gonna share it with, um, I guess let's just dive into A Course in Miracles because A Course in Miracles helped me in countless ways be able to start becoming a conscious consumer, a conscious um, human, like <laughs> just realizing one of the hardest realizations for me was realizing that I really do truly create my own reality. And if there are things going on in my life that I'm not necessarily um, excited about, <laughs> that I was probably, an, I was an energetic match in some way for that to become into my physical realm, right? So A Course in Miracles is such a beautiful book I had this book for years before I actually started diving into it. When I first tried to read it, it was so overwhelming. To be honest with you, my connection with faith, source, God was not in a good place. So reading anything, any type of content that spoke about God, I was, wasn't an energetic match for it. Um, it was difficult for me because of the things that I had to heal with my relationship with source and faith. So. Wherever you are on your journey with that, I totally understand that. And if you need to, um, if you have to do what I had to do in the beginning of reading this was replacing God with love just to start warming up that relationship again, then that's okay to do that. And then over time, you'll start understanding, um, you know, unfortunately, if you have had negative past experiences with that, then hopefully you can heal that relationship in some way. So... Um, a Course in Miracles, the whole concept behind it is changing from fear to love. It is such a beautiful concept. So what it describes a miracle as is it's any time that you switch from a perception of fear to love. So when I started reading about this, I started paying, paying more attention to everything going on within my day and how I actually did have control over changing what was happening based on controlling my internal environment. So you guys hear me talk about that all the time, right? Because a lot of us wake up, this is like what I call unconscious living, is we wake up and we allow our mood and how we feel and how our day goes to be determined by what's going on around us. So if we wake up and shit's hitting the fan on the news or we read something sad on social media, we are then aligning our frequencies to that information and then becoming a lower vibrational being, essentially. So this is such a beautiful book about how you can completely rewire your subconscious, take your power back, and be able to be a conscious human and decide that even when it doesn't necessarily make sense to be happy that you can, right? Because there, goodness, I don't even, I think 2020 should be like just referred to as the year that should not be named. <laughs> but 2020 taught us a lot about that, right? About how important it is for us to secure our own, I now call it energy mask because that's what I called it on accident. And it's so perfect instead of oxygen mask because it's all an energetic game, right? So of Course in Miracles has a workbook in the back of the book. It says workbook for students. It also has um, a manual for teachers, which is really incredible. If you guys have any interest in doing um, like spiritual coaching, life coaching, anything like that, this would probably be your like foundational baby. And 
for me, the text was so hard to comprehend because I was so far away from being the energetic match for it when I was first introduced to it that I, for years, didn't touch it. And then I finally started diving into the workbook. So that was really cool. There is actually an app for A Course in Miracles that you can download that prompts you for each exercise. So there's 365 different exercises for A Course in Miracles. It's you know intended for a full year. And the exercises usually don't take longer than a minute or two. And they are powerful. So if you have ever studied um, hypnotherapy and the power of our subconscious, this book just rocked my world in realizing how simple you can truly change your like your hardwiring programming, which is where all of your bread and butter is, right? For accomplishing really anything. So it's changing those limiting beliefs that are hardwired within us. And that's obviously why I love hypnotherapy, but this book really, really does that so well. So I would highly suggest that. It's such a great way to set your tone for the new year. Even if you're like me, I have never gone through a full year with it. So I think maybe last year, I probably did about 40 days. I did it along with doing 40 days straight of meditating every day, which was, oh God, so hard for me in the beginning to do that. I was just, didn't think I was a person that could sit still. I'm a very like, um busy person. <laughs> so if you are some of the, like every time you hear someone recommending that you start a meditation practice and you think that it's not anything that you would ever be able to do, I feel you. I hear you because <laughs> I didn't think I was either. And now I've realized that it is so incredibly important for my health, my overall well-being. And it makes me really, really happy. So when I drift away from my meditation practice, and I'm talking, you guys, when I first started off and when I've done like our meditation challenges in the Feel My Soul community Facebook page, um, I just suggest starting off with even 90 seconds a day for you. And some of the big things with meditation is, I think there is this misconception that people think that you have to keep your mind still. And you don't necessarily have to do that. Like if that's how you want to be able to do meditation, then that's fine. For me, that was just physically impossible. I could not keep my mind quiet. So what I have learned is, um, you know, there's different ways of meditating. You can do a meditation where you're focused on one thought for a consistent amount of time, which is great too, because you're then learning to like tame the monkey inside your mind or the squirrels at the rave. <laughs> I, I just embrace my rave now. And, um, or you can just allow your thoughts to free flow. So that was what was for me was so important and still is. Like I um, consistently meditate at least 30 minutes every day. And oh my gosh, when we moved you guys and we started renovations, like I have had men in my house working on this house for months, like pretty much a couple weeks after we got the keys, it was like they became like family because it was like from 8.30 in the morning until Zella was going to bed at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. They were here nights, weekends. It was crazy. So I got out of my flow and it impacted me in so many ways in not very good ways. So <laughs> I had to like secure my energy, my energy mask again. And it just reminded me of how incredibly important it is. Because I think when we're feeling good, we tend to like let our practices um, slip away from us, right? And then if you're like me, <laughs> I try to do, do, do until the universe hits me upside the head with a two by four. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, I surrender. I'll listen. I'll, I'll put in the work. So just 90 seconds to yourself a day to start would be incredible for you. Another book that I wanted to share with you guys. This is the book that I'm going to read from for you guys. So this is my idea with the ADD book club. <laughs> if I find something in a book that I want to share with you guys, there might be multiple chapters from one book if I'm really vibing with it, like Abraham Hicks books. I'm always like really deep into them. Um, Chaz is now really into them too. I love when 
Uh, you guys, a lot of people are like, you know, what if my spouse isn't into this, blah, 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 blah. And eventually, like when you just start working on yourself, people see the changes in you and then they want to know what you're doing. And then eventually they start becoming more open to it, right? So if you have someone in your life that isn't necessarily on board with the ideas of the things that we're all into, then that's okay. And sometimes you have to love them from afar for a little bit and they eventually hopefully will come around. If not, at least cheer you on for being happy and the high vibe being right. Okay, I'm gonna read comments really quick and then I'm gonna dive into this book. Let's see. You're very good at speaking and communicating. Highly interested in this book. In my own little process of growth, change, who isn't? With the two really good books, but this one. Okay, so many comments on this comment. Thank you so much. I appreciate that more than you know. If you guys have seen me public speak <laughs> before, um, public speaking was terrifying to me for a very, very long time. I avoided degrees that required a speaking class and uh, used to just get in, <laughs> up on stage and just cry my eyes out anytime I had to speak and communication was just not there for me. It was like my throat chakra was completely blocked. <laughs> like it was non-existent. And it's so funny how the things that are sometimes your hardest trials are, end up being your biggest connection to your life purpose and calling. So I believe that I'm here to teach and um, just finally had to put, start putting myself out there with my communication. So if you guys have seen that progress over the years, then I hope it has inspired you to know that you can do it too. And okay. And you said my own little process of growth change. Yes. I tell my students all the time that I am not the guru teacher that knows all. <laughs> I am learning right along with my students and I am just like, I'm like the kid that you want to cheat off from in class because <laughs> I have been a, like, had like an obsession with learning, growing, and evolving in all different areas of self-development and then specifically drawn to um, contents, content with um, any type of spiritual awakening, holistic healing, and health. So I'm just the kid that you want to be friends with because I've got really good notes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I think that's what's so fun about my courses too. For me, like I take away so much from them every time we do them as well because I'm learning right along with you guys. And it's awesome that you guys get to see the behind the scenes of what's going on in my life because I feel like when you can see someone else going through it, it connects so deeply. So those stories um, are so powerful, right? So it's it's beautiful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We are all on our own journeys. And if someone says they're not learning and growing evolving anymore and they think that they've arrived, then they're no longer living, in my opinion. So I'm just a forever student. I always was the person that was like, okay, I'm gonna get this degree and then I'll be happy or I'll be done with learning. I actually genuinely hated school. <laughs> That's why it took me forever to get a degree. That and because it just was something I was trying to force myself into a box I didn't really quite fit in that was the, what was supposed to happen for you to be successful, right? So, okay, you guys, this is the book that I want to share with you guys. So what I'm going to do, it's The Astonishing Power of Emotions from Esther and Jerry Hicks, The Teachers of Abraham. My work, I feel like, would be if Abraham Hicks and Louise Hay had a baby. <laughs> That's like the theme that I go for. A lot of healing, a lot of releasing, a lot of rewiring your subconscious, a lot of positivity. I know that like my positivity isn't for everyone. I think I drive some people absolutely insane <laughs> with my vibes. And over the years, eventually I had to realize to just embrace it and be who I really am. Um, but for a while I went through a period of time where I just buried myself into a, you know, hole and didn't allow myself to be who I am. So I appreciate all of you so much that have encouraged me along my journey to just embrace that shit, right? <laughs> okay. So I feel like this book is so powerful. If you guys are familiar with manifesting and... If you've watched The Secret, 
right? Everyone has seen The Secret. It's, I appreciate The Secret because it brought to everyone's attention the possibility of manifesting. However, The Secret leaves out what The Secret actually is. <laughs> like, there is not a how to apply The Secret. Like, the concepts are accurate, right? But the big piece of how you even start manifesting and how you really become a conscious co-creator and creating your reality to be an abundant reality is completely left out. So in the introduction to this book, um, Jerry actually talks about how he found an original manuscript for Think and Grow Rich. You guys, that book was written in like 1937. So these concepts have been known for centuries, for forever, <laughs> since the beginning of time. And, you know, really, it used to be that the only books that somehow referenced manifesting in some way was like old, rich, white, dead men, right? It was like, these books are what I actually started with my self-development um, journey with because that was all that was really available. So Napoleon Hill, um, you know, he's like a staple for that. So many of you have probably read that book, but throughout the whole time you're reading the book, you're like, what the hell? Like, I think I understand what this guy's talking about, but I'm not 100% sure that I really even know what's going on. Like, he's referring to the hidden secret, and he mentions it all throughout the book, but he never tells you exactly what the hidden secret is. So, um, Jerry talks about how he found the original manuscript where um, Napoleon Hill mentioned vibration and frequencies 37 times in the original manuscript. And his uh, editor removed that because he didn't feel that the wording was going to be accepted by society, right? It was out there or whatever type of negative things people say about <laughs> this type of language. It's very exciting that it's becoming, you know, mainstream now. But even if you have been into manifesting and things like this, for a while, you know the skepticism that comes along with it and whatever, I'm here for it, right? I'm here to be the pioneer behind it and I think a lot of you guys are too. So that's why we've all been drawn to it since we were younger. And it's very interesting because this book goes deep into the how for manifesting and it has a lot to do with being able to align your emotions and being able to... Think from a place of who you want to be in the future instead of trying to, instead of thinking about who you are now, right? So we are programmed, trained to think about our current reality, right? So like the typical way that someone begins the manifestation process or for a normal person manifesting goes like this or an attempt to manifest. Let's say dreaming goes like this, okay? You see something that you're really drawn to. And you get really excited when you see it and it lights you up and you then you start imagining what it would be like to have that or do that or to experience that right um and you get super super excited you feel that momentum from your emotional charge within being activated and it's it feels really good right it's exciting and fun to dream and think bigger than our current self and then you completely wipe out the momentum of your manifestation of actually having what it is that just made you really excited by realizing that your current self is not an energetic match for what it is that you are thinking would be nice to experience. Your current self isn't a match for it because if you, if you were, if you weren't holding yourself back from receiving it in some way, then you would already have it, okay? How long does it take you to manifest something? As long as it takes you to get out of your own way. <laughs> So how are you holding yourself back? What are you afraid is going to happen if you actually receive this? Or why do you believe that it's not possible for you? In some way, you're holding yourself back. I can say that with every ounce of my being because I've experienced it firsthand. Or it's divine timing, right? So there's a delicate balance between that. It's a dance. You are always being guided and protected. So it's always this or something better as well. So a lot of times... We think that something is gonna go a certain way and it actually ends up working out better than we could have ever imagined. And that's where the faith and the flow comes into play instead of forcing and controlling. So 
when we are thinking and manifesting and wanting to create this abundance within our life, we have to allow ourselves to be able to visualize from a place of no longer thinking about where we currently are. We have to make decisions and cast this vision from where we want to be in the future, not where we currently are, because our current self is just our past self. It's just an accumulation of your past thoughts, words, and beliefs. And if you make decisions based on where you are right now, then you are going to be constantly recreating the same self. You're literally on the hamster wheel. (laughs) So get off it. (laughs) Allow yourself to dream and play, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense that it could be possible for you because anything is possible for you. You can do, have, and be absolutely anything it is that you desire as long as you allow yourself to get out of your own way. So learning how to be able to activate like within the quantum field and your emotions is so incredibly powerful. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about how our thoughts send out an electric charge throughout our body and our um, emotions create this magnetic charge that pulls those experiences within uh, our physical reality, right? So... Abraham Hicks says you only have to activate the thought for 17 seconds to plant that seed of beginning that manifestation. Yes, it does pay off to think about it more over time as long as you can think about your manifestations and what you want to have from a place of excitement and expectancy and just a deep knowing, not a wanting and a lack perception. So when someone is saying, you know, I really want this, Wanting something has an energetic charge of not having. You are reinforcing that vibration of lack. So when you can come from a place of knowing, that's when it gets really fun. Like it's, when Chaz and I talk now, it's just like, oh yeah, like you want it? That's what we want? Yep, okay, done. How long is it gonna take us to do it? Okay, what do we have to do (laughs) to get out of our own way to allow ourselves to receive it? And it just becomes a really fun, a fun game, right? It's It's pretty wild when you start working with universal laws and start realizing how they are, they are as reliable as the law of gravity, you guys. And we're all about to find that out. Like the next couple of decades, shit's about to get crazy (laughs) in the best of ways. People are going to be awakening and realizing all of these things. That's why I feel like so comfortable now to just talk about it openly. And you know, if it's for you, then great. (laughs) Um, I was like, I felt very comfortable in my own space of doing my lives within my community, within the Feel My Soul Facebook group, because that was like my safe space, right? Like everyone was on pretty much the same wavelength of wanting to know more about this. So it'll be fun to just kind of just take all the filters off, right? 2021, doing the damn thing, getting outside of that comfort zone. All right, so let's dive into the book. I just love you. You always inspire me to stop bullshitting myself. (laughs) Yay. Okay. Yay. You guys said I think I have Think and Grow Rich. I have it too on my um, bookshelf. And the Think and Grow Rich copy that I have has like a discounted price from Barnes and Nobles for like $7. Do you want to know why (laughs) the book isn't like number one hits right now? Cause you left all the good shit out, dude. Like <laughs> you, you should have just embraced it and told the whole truth about what you know about becoming successful and manifesting. And you'd probably like be a huge trend right now. Like there are so many uh, metaphysicians that I love their work and they were from the 1930s. Like there was a huge, massive collective like a uh, knowing going on then because incredible authors came from that time amazing books um florence schwinn is an example of some of the her work is absolutely incredible you guys can search her on youtube and she will rock your world <laughs> and to think that people like this back in the 1930s knew what was up and it's really interesting though because in the 1930s that's also when um Big Pharma got huge um, and hospitals took out all of their holistic remedies for healing. Um, frequencies were huge. Frequency healing, uh, quantum healing was was big in the 30s. And then it was 
all taken away. But I guess I have to be careful what I talk about because I don't want my video to get deleted by social media. You still can't talk too much truth. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read to you guys. I'm going to read to the class now. Your expansion is constant. If your observation of your life experience causes you to realize that you do not have enough money to do some of the things you want to do, your desire for money is amplified and your vibrational escrow now expands to include that desire. Everything that happens throughout your day that causes you to realize that you want or need more money causes additional amendments to your desire regarding your financial abundance. When you do not have a significant relationship, your desire for one is amplified. When your current relationship feels like a struggle, your desire for a more compatible relationship is amplified. In every waking moment of your life, you are utilizing the data that makes up the details of your life in order to expand. And this expansion is constant. And with every detail that you chew upon, you exude vibrational requests for improvement. And the broader your part of you, your inner being or source, becomes that expanded version that your life has asked for. Okay, I just remembered the story that I want to tell you guys about A Course in Miracles, but it goes along with Abraham Hicks too. So um, I'll give you an example of like being in, like living and making decisions from like an unconscious perspective and then realizing how to take your power back and becoming conscious and creating what it is you actually want. So yesterday, I woke up and I was so inspired, you guys. Like I re rewrote my entire manifesting course. I was just like in this beautiful flow. And if you guys are creative or you guys understand, like there, when you're in the flow, you're just in it and it feels so good. So I was at it for like a couple of hours yesterday morning before Zeller or Chaz woke up. So I like silence. I like it quiet when I can allow myself to create. And then Zella woke up and I'm so grateful Chaz does breakfast with her in the morning so I can um, continue to do whatever I need to do. And whether that's like time for me or working or whatever it is. And so Zella has a bounce house downstairs right now. She has a car that is like a remote control car that she can drive, but she's just not old enough to be able to drive it yet. So we drive it for it and it's loud. It plays like the loudest music. It's, it's so fun, right? And it's interesting that when I hear that going, if I'm in a good, if I'm in alignment, then that sound makes me really, really happy to hear that. But if I'm out of alignment, then I'm like, oh my God, there's so much noise going on. So yesterday morning, I unconsciously started drifting to <laughs> being a little bit grumpy that there was so much noise because my office is downstairs and so they came down so I could hear everything going on. Instead of realizing that that was probably a sign from the universe that I needed to stop working and to go enjoy and have fun and play with my family, right? So it takes me a moment now. I am constantly paying attention to my emotions. So when I felt myself getting grumpy, I was like, okay, take a second, pause, and think about this situation. What is the universe trying to tell you? What lesson am I supposed to be learning from this? Anytime that my emotional charge gets like activated. Um, you know, all emotions are serving you in some way. So I really check myself. Like I'm constantly having a freaking intervention with myself. Like, <laughs> how do I want to feel? How do I get myself out of alignment? How do I get my ass back into alignment as soon as possible? So I realized that I had been working and created so much beautiful content and it was time to take a pause and really feel myself up in what really makes me happy, which is my family and laughing and playing and doing all of that. So I checked myself and stopped working and we had an awesome um, morning together, an awesome day together, but it's very interesting. So that is an example of changing your perception from fear to love. So I truly believe every decision that a human makes either comes from an ultimate base root of fear or love. So the goal with The Course of Miracles is to start changing our perception from fear to love. So the beautiful thing about the lessons from A Course in Miracles and then how you can connect it with Abraham is Abraham teaches so much about emotions and how to be able to work with your emotions. And like I said, all emotions are serving you. And I am the first person to 
teach that you can't just put a happy sticker <laughs> over over something that needs to be felt. So all emotions are serving you and at sometimes when we do have those negative emotions come up, they that need to be felt whether they're justifiable or not, that's when you learn how to decipher between the two. So in our in my course I go really deep in being able to put yourself in a place of being able to be an observer of what's going on and to decide how deep you need to go into these emotions because if we just bypass our emotions and if there's something that's really upsetting us or bothering us and we just bury it then our body actually stores negative emotions that then can cause a complete shit storm years and years later you guys like things from like 20 years ago can haunt you if you haven't allowed yourself to really feel whatever you need to feel allow it to, in order for it to heal so then you can release it and create space to be able to move forward so yeah we go we go deep in all of it you guys um so i wanted to share that with you about a course in miracles and just giving i think examples and stories are so important for you to be able to connect with content so um okay so let's go back to the book it is all about aligning your thoughts so you have now read several times in the beginning page of the pages of this book are words that you must allow yourself to keep up with that which you are becoming if you are to live the joyful life that you have come forth to live. This important premise is not only the basis of this valuable book, but is the foundation of your joyful life experience. We do not see many of you taking issue with the idea that when you do not have enough of something that you want, your desire to have it is even more amplified. And no one questions that once you have identified that you really want something, you would feel better in the having of it. But there is a very important distinction that we want you to understand that will help you mold your life into that which pleases you. This is a mental process, not an action process. It is about aligning your thoughts. It is not about taking action in order to achieve results. So I think this hits home on the misconceptions of manifesting because I feel like people watch The Secret and since it doesn't teach you exactly how to manifest, that it's like, oh yeah, I can just sit around and think about something all day long and it's just gonna come to me. Well. Law of attraction also requires law of action, and it's a beautiful dance with being able to find what inspired action you need to take to reach your results of what you want. But if you can get so much momentum around your thoughts about what it is you want to experience, being able to achieve that result can become so smooth and feel effortless. And I often say, you know, it gets to be easy, it gets to be fun. What you want to create doesn't have to be as difficult as you're making it out to be, right? <laughs> like I'm constantly checking myself on this too. I share a story about how I had a dream since I was a little girl. The first time I went to Sedona, I we went on a hike and it was a beautiful hike that goes around a resort. It's the Enchantment Resort. And you know, my family was like, that's where famous people stay. That's like, the, you know, that's where like the really special people stay. And you're not special. I'm just kidding. But that's basically what I felt like. Like, I just didn't feel that it was something that I was going to ever be able to do, right? So out of all the trips I've taken over the years to Sedona, I have never even looked into staying at Enchantment because I just thought that I wasn't going to be able to have that experience for myself. So I counted myself out without even knowing what was required to reach that result. And this is an example of how we do this all the time based on our limiting beliefs that we have allowed ourselves to have deeply embedded within us. So it's really interesting when you start analyzing that and figuring out where they come from and deciding you don't even want these beliefs. <laughs> like you want to live bigger and bolder and do different things that maybe you once thought weren't possible for you. So you can start choosing different thoughts and experiences to be able to make you an energetic match for that experience that you want to have, right? But a lot of times we count ourselves out from being able to have that experience without even knowing what that experience requires. So 
Um, and as you guys know, for my 30th, we got to stay at Enchantment and it was absolutely incredible. It was such an amazing experience and I'll never forget it. And I plan on staying there many, 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 many more times. It's voted the number one spa in America and it's just like, it is my type of vacation. <laughs> um, but it's super interesting when we start thinking about why do I believe that this is the way that things have to go and why do I believe that this is the way that life has to be? It's really interesting. Like, you know, success, the idea of having to work 80 hours a week from sunup to sundown to create a successful income, whether that's in a career or um, a business, you know, do, do people that work 80 hours a week achieve incredible results because of the effort and the amount of time they put into achieving their goals? Or is it because they believe that it requires that effort? So it's actually the belief that makes it possible. This like applies for working out too. Like if someone thinks that they have to work out two hours a day, seven days a week to achieve their results, yeah, they're probably gonna have great results. But couldn't they possibly have great results working out 20 minutes? If they believed that the 20 minutes was going to have incredible results for them? I have really awesome um, case studies that proves the power of our intention and what we believe about what we are doing. So it's the law of expect expectancy. So many Ivy League colleges are studying this right now, the power of our mind. Our consciousness is the last unexplored continent. And it is so fun to get to see people catching up. <laughs> you guys, we are powerful. We are so, so powerful. So why do we believe that things have to be so hard? I actually, so this year I had my first five-figure course launch at the beginning of the year. Um, and that was really exciting for me. That was a really big goal. I had watched a lot of the different people that I had done courses with um, for my own personal journey and experience for my own personal development. When they had reached their first five-figure course launches, it was a huge, I was like, oh my, like couldn't believe that people were doing that just from sharing you know, their own experiences and things that, you know, being able to help others through sharing your own experiences is, has been such a beautiful blessing for me. I truly believe that's why I've had the experiences that I've had. But anyways, I filmed the entire behind the scenes of making this happen because so many of my students have these huge goals, huge dreams but we don't even allow ourselves to even get started on experiencing those goals and dreams because we think it has to be so fucking hard <laughs> when it actually can be much simpler and you can release the pressure off yourself if you have set that intention for yourself. So I filmed the entire behind the scenes because you guys, um, you'll see me going in and out of like going back to my old ways of thinking things have to be hard, of thinking I have to work until I'm exhausted and then coming back to my truth and realizing that when we are in flow, when we feel good, that is the most powerful place that we can be manifesting and creating from. And that allows things to flow effortlessly to you. You let go of that resistance. It is, it is a total vibe and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So, okay. When your life causes you to realize that you want more money, we are not suggesting that you get another job or change your activities in some way to get more money. When your life causes you to realize that you have 50 pounds more body weight than you desire, we are not suggesting that you go on a strict diet or begin intense exercise to reduce your weight. When you are unappreciated at work, we are not suggesting that you confront someone demanding more appreciation or that you quit your job and try to find another position where appreciation is offered more easily. Allowing yourself to become what life has caused you to desire is not about action. It is about the lining of thought energies. It is about focusing your attention in the direction of your desire rather than looking back at the current conditions that have given birth to your desire. 
And why, while you may very well eventually become inspired to some action, it is the alignment of thought energy, of vibrational alignment, that you are seeking. I mean, we've all worked in flow and we've all worked in force, right? <laughs> flow feels a whole hell of a lot better than forcing anything. Okay, when you achieve vibrational alignment, any inspired action will feel wonderful. This is the place everyone should be creating from. <laughs> Every single person or living from. Without the vibrational alignment, any action taken will feel difficult. Forcing it. Don't force that shit. <laughs> With the vibrational alignment, your every effort will yield wonderful results or return on your time. Without the vibrational alignment, the outcome of your effort will be disappointing, resulting in discouragement as you conclude, this just doesn't work for me. And then when we think it doesn't work for us, we are presented with evidence proving that thought, right? It's all about perception and what you tell yourself. It's really interesting. So our body doesn't know the difference between what we are actually experiencing and what we are telling it we are experiencing. So um, this is why I do different techniques when we are diving into like releasing limiting beliefs and rewiring your subconscious. Even when I'm doing hypnotherapy with someone, I do it very differently than the traditional route of working through the past experiences because if we, depending on how deep someone needs to go to be able to allow themselves to release it, like, again, you need to feel to heal. However, feeling too much or spreading it out and re-walking yourself through that over and over again, your body thinks that you are re-experiencing that, that tra traumatic experience over and over again. So it's like a fine dance of trying to figure out what you need and how long you need it before you can let it go, feel amazing, and allow um, that space that was being held from that trauma to now be open and free to welcome in the abundance that you want to create for the future. So I could read this book on, or just go on for days in this book. Um, if you guys are still on, that means you might want to hear a little bit more. So I'll give you guys a little bit more of this. Vibrational alignment feels like relief. When we speak of vibrational alignment, we are referring to aligning the vibrations within your being only. So I love um, something really important when you're trying to learn how to manifest is you have to learn how the universe speaks. And it is correlated with how you would walk someone through hypnosis. So people in hypnosis do not recognize negatives. So you can't say you don't want to smoke anymore because when you're thinking about that sentence, the emphasis is on smoking. So that person doesn't have that filter. It's just like a child when they're developing. They're in a stage of hypnosis until the age of seven, right? So tell your child what you want them to do, not what you don't want them to do, because that's the emphasis in the sentence. So when you're saying, or you say, don't think about the pink elephant in the room. Everyone just thought about a pink elephant, right? <laughs> I'm trying to watch my F thumbs. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are picking up on that because you know they're flying all the time. So our, um, it's very, very powerful when you can start catching yourself because unfortunately we are programmed to focus on the negative and the things that we don't want, right? So if you can start speaking about what you do want instead of focusing on what you don't want, that is a game changer. But it takes time and conscious effort because it's much easier to, you know, we are hardwired from like our primal instincts to focus on the negative out of fear and trying to protect ourselves, right? Our body and our mind's number, I mean, it's, it's there to protect us. So if it thinks that there's danger for some reason, whether it's a new experience that's unknown and uncomfortable, or there was a past experience that implanted a belief of why you have to be careful and it's not safe to try new things because this is what happened before, 
you have to be able to walk yourself through the different processes of being able to rewire those limiting beliefs. Okay, so let's see. It has nothing to do with anything that anyone else is doing. This sometimes raises a question in those who hear us say that because it seems to many people that the only problems they have are due to their interaction with other people. So doesn't something need to be done about those individuals? Doesn't have anything to do with other people. <laughs> Everyone is just a mere reflection of you, right? Every interaction you have. That's a fun one too. Like when you start realizing like someone that drives you absolutely nuts, <laughs> you're like, if you can take yourself, oh, you know, away from the situation of being so connected to it and really be able to observe it from a non-emotional attachment, like put yourself, pretend like you're giving your own self advice. You might realize that there's something deep within you that that person is like triggering or reflecting back to you of something that you need to work on. And same thing goes with if there's something that you really admire about someone, it's probably because that quality is within you. It is true you're interacting with others and often that interaction is the source of your discomfort or problem, but asking them to be different is not the answer. Most of them are not willing to change for you anyway. And even when they are willing, they cannot consistently be what you need them to be in order for you to feel good. The answer to your feeling good is only in the alignment of the energy within you. As we have said before, it is about you allowing yourself to keep up with the larger part of you that it has become. For example, let us say that you are having a perfectly nice day, you have rested well, you've eaten well, and you are happily involved in a project that is pleasing you, and then someone you care about comes to you with a problem. Not only is there a problem, but the person also thinks that you should take some sort of action to solve the problem. This could be your mate, one of your children, an employee, a client, a friend, or perhaps even someone you do not know. In this example, let us say that one of your employees whom you love and care about is having an interpersonal relationship problem with other employees whom you also care deeply about. As you listen to this person presenting his or her perspective on the situation, you begin to feel your happiness diminishing, your vitality diminishing, your clarity diminishing, and now you feel sad, tired, and confused. You listen politely and your mind races to find solutions. You find yourself relating to what this person is telling you as you hear his or her description of the situation. And you begin to feel overwhelmed as you realize that you really do not have enough knowledge or time to gather enough information to make a rational decision about how to solve this problem. <clears throat> you want to gather the information, perhaps talk with others involved in order to get a clear view of the situation, but as you take the action of more discussion and begin to make suggestions for changes in policies or activities, you feel worse. The more you listen and discuss and the more people you talk with about the situation, the more powerless you feel as you realize that you cannot begin to unravel the situation and get to the bottom of it. And while you have the power to make sweeping decisions, in fact, if, these, if they were employees, you could fire them all and be, begin again with a fresh and willing new group, you can feel the, the action as well. While you usually are not aware of it at the time, a wonderful opportunity for expansion is occurring because in the midst of this uncomfortable turmoil, you are giving birth to expanded rockets of desire. With every part of the situation in which you know what you do not want, a counter rocket of desire is launched and the broader non-physical part of you has become a vibrational match to that expanded desire. So this is like how everything is serving us, right? every shit storm <laughs> from 2020, right? In some way was either like a sacred contract or something that had to happen in order for us to figure out what we really want and what we really don't want. And then, you know, unfortunately, I'm totally speaking from experience on this one. Unfortunately, some of us aren't willing to change or do the things that we know we need to do deep down until shit has hit the fan so bad that you just can't ignore it any longer and you're like on your knees like okay <laughs> i give up i surrender hopefully you guys uh take your signs and notice them much quicker <laughs> than that but it's a learning process and the discomfort that you are feeling right now which seems like a response to what your employee is complaining about is actually the discord between your current thought of what has gone wrong and the expanded desire that your inner being is newly embracing 
The vibrations within you are now out of alignment, and when you are out of vibrational alignment, there is no action that will solve the problem. You will not find effective actions or words or even thoughts or ideas from your place of misalignment. In fact, any of that which is attempted from your place of misalignment will only serve to make matters worse. If we were standing in your physical shoes, our every effort would be pointed toward one result. We would be looking for a way, any way, to feel better. We would do our best from where we stand to find a way of finding some sort of emotional relief about this unsettled subject. Because when some relief is discovered, you are on the way to an alignment of energy. This is probably one of my favorite topics to teach on. Oh my gosh, you guys, this whole book, I could just keep reading and reading and reading to you. It's so good. Um, favorite topics to teach on is how at any point you can decide to choose again, to choose a new thought, to put yourself in a different situation into a different vibrational frequency that feels better and teaching tools how to do that. And it's a lot easier, it's a lot simpler than you would think, but it's Again, that rewiring. So, all right, let me see how long that one is. I'll read a couple of these to you. Putting your canoe into the stream. Imagine putting your canoe with oars already inside in a river and floating on the current, and then deliberately turning your canoe upstream and paddling with all your strength against the flow. And as we see in your boat, paddling very hard against the current, we ask, what do you think about turning your canoe downstream and going with the current? This is working from flow instead of force. And most reply, turn downstream? Oh, that just seems lazy. <laughs> right? Like we give a fucking award for hard work all the time, but it, to a point of where we are going to celebrate you being exhausted and completely disconnected and out of your body like <laughs> your soul has been sucked dry and we are going to celebrate that because you've worked so hard to get there can you guys tell <laughs> i have a little bit of um i just firmly believe that success can be done differently than it being a struggle okay but how long can you keep that up we ask I'm not sure, most answer, but it is my duty or responsibility to figure that out. I talk about my second quarter life crisis was fueled by thinking that if I worked so hard and sacrificed like my happiness now, then when I reach this amazing achievement of being successful, then I can enjoy life, right? But it was like the common theme for my life Always. It was like, once I got my degree, then I would be happy. So I'm just going to be miserable through school right now because then I will get to be happy at some point in my life, right? After I make myself go through this miserable time of doing this, then I'll be happy. And then you realize, okay, that's really, I'm not happy at all after I reach that result. And the secret is to be happy right here, right now and figuring out how you can be in a place of joy and alignment, regardless of the things that still need to be done or as you are working toward whatever it is you're trying to create and accomplish. But if you can't be happy now, you won't be happy when. So all of us have, well, many of us have the mentality of, <clears throat> I'll be happy when I make more money. I'll be happy when, like a big one for me, like when we were trying to conceive, I'll be happy when I have a baby. I'll be happy um, when I get my naturopath degree. I'll be happy when I prove to myself that I'm worthy of being happy. Like, no, <laughs> that's not how it works, okay? Like your success is not going to prove to anyone enough that you then are qualified to be happy, okay? Um, it's very interesting that we do that to ourselves. So interesting. I see a lot of comments coming through. Sorry guys, I haven't. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so then we all like try and do this as long as possible, right? And then this is usually where our uh, dark night of the soul or spiritual awakening comes from because shit just hits the fan so bad that we finally drop to our knees and surrender. Um, and then if we were to visit long with most people, they would go on to explain, this is just what we all do here, right? It's just the norm. No one's really happy. <laughs> so we all just have to be miserable. It's what my mother did and her mother did before her. Anyone who amounts to anything works diligently against the current. All trophies and monuments are erected to honor those hardworking people who stayed strong against the current. Is anyone connecting with this? I'm like, yeah, story of my life. And anyway, people often remind us there are even more rewards after we die for those who work hard like this. We watch you getting more efficient at fighting the current. Your muscles get stronger, your boats become sleeker, and you discover more effective oars. And always, we listen patiently as we hear a variety of versions on the same general theme of justification for paddling upstream. But then we always explain what we consider to be the most important thing that our physical friends could ever hear from us. Nothing that you want is upstream. Nothing that you want is upstream. Right? So people like buy into the belief that like, if I had more money, I would be happy. But having more money just isn't in the cards for me, so I'm just going to be miserable. Or then they buy into the belief of more money is what's going to make me happy, so then I'm just going to sacrifice my happiness now to work really, really hard. And then you finally end up achieving this dream of whatever it is, making six figures or whatever you know amount of money you connect with being successful and then if you weren't happy while you were earning it then you get to arrive at your goal and realize you're still not fucking happy <laughs> it's not about the money the reason we are so certain that nothing that you want is upstream is becoming is because we understand the stream okay i have to finish my thought on that it's not about the money but money is an evil either i could go on uh, probably a two-hour rampage about how money isn't evil and it isn't greedy to want more. All of those limiting beliefs too have to be rewired. Money gets to be fun. It allows you to do things and be a blessing to other people, right? Okay, we have seen it in its origin, oh, <laughs> in its origin, and we watch it as it increases in size and speed. We know what the current is and why it flows the way it does, and we understand where this stream will lead you, if you will, but allow it. This is, I'm just, I'm having, you guys, I could talk for seven hours. <laughs> this is the stream of life, and it was in motion before you came forth into your physical body. And from your non-physical perspective, as you set forth your intentions to be here on this planet, in this body... You add it to the current of this fast moving stream. And now, focused in this physical body, you continue to add to the current of the stream by sifting through the data of your life and coming to personal conclusions about what you do not want and which produces the natural asking for what you do want. For with every asking, whether of great or small importance, you add to the speed of the current of the stream. Whenever your life causes you to ask for something beyond what you are living, the non-physical part of you rids that rocket of desire and literally becomes the vibrational fulfillment of your request. I'm going to read that again. The non-physical part of you rides that rocket of desire and literally becomes the vibrational fulfillment of your request. Every question you ask causes a formulation of an answer and your inner being focuses upon that answer. Every problem you face causes a formulation of a solution, and your inner being not only focuses upon that solution, but also literally becomes a vibration, becomes it vibrationally. If you will allow it, this stream, this fast-moving current, will carry you downstream to the fulfillment of everything that your life has caused you to create, for it is all there for you in a sort of vibrational escrow waiting for you to flow to it. So good, you guys. So, so good. Cam, hi. Hi, I miss you. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
In simple terms, this law says the essence of that which is like unto itself is drawn. Law of attraction, right? Like attracts like. Whether they are contemplating the well-documented physics of electronics or noticing that their own habitual thoughts are rendering their circumstances and experiences that perfectly match their moods and attitudes regarding all things, many are consciously recognizing the basis of this powerful law in their own experiences. The powerful law of attraction is responding to the vibration of that which the greater part of you has become, and as the law of attraction responds to the vibration of the expanded you, the current flows. For the current of this, of this stream of life is literally the momentum that is caused by the law of attraction's response to the vibration of your own expanded being. The big question, the question that this book seeks to answer is, what are you, in your physical form, doing in relationship to the vibration of your expanded self? Are you letting yourself be up to vibrational speed with what you have become or not? Dun, dun, dun. So everything that we want, everything that we desire, I'm trying to no longer use want because like I said before, wanting something, like let me give you an example. I want, I want to have a new car. I want to have a new car. When I say I want to have a new car, then I'm probably thinking about all the reasons why I want the new car, right? I start thinking about all the reasons why my current car is not what I want to be experiencing. And then when we think about why we don't like what we currently have anymore, then we are actually aligning our frequencies with attracting more of what we do not want. So when I was talking about needing to understand how the universe speaks, it the universe answers to the person, not to the request. So your words are really important because what you speak is ultimately changing your frequencies and rewiring your subconscious, but it's the belief behind what you're saying. So like for positive affirmations, when you pick a positive affirmation, you start with an affirmation that you want to be true for your future self but it's most, that's not true for your current self, who you currently are, right? So it almost feels like you're lying to yourself as you start speaking it because you're so far from being an energetic match of what it is that you want to actually be embodying. But over time, if you stick with speaking the positive affirmation over and over and over again, eventually you become an energetic match for what it is that you're speaking. But it's that feeling, that emotional charge of what you're speaking that truly matters. It's all about the emotional connection that you can make. So when you're trying to manifest something or thinking about what you really want, have you gotten clear enough on what you want that it activates an emotional charge within you that is then drawing those experiences to you through the quantum field? Everything is already available to you. You're the one that's deciding to play small, right? Why do we do that to ourselves? Like if you can truly have, do, or be anything it is that you desire, why don't you start dreaming bigger, right? And then start figuring out how you're blocking yourself from having it because it's all available to you. If it's available for one person, then it's available to you. And if no one has done it yet and it's on your heart and you have that idea, that idea isn't just like a coincidence. That idea is because it's something that is possible for you, right? Yeah, I could go on for days. I can't believe I talked for almost an hour with you guys. Yay, that was fun! I'm so excited. I'll be doing this throughout the year of sharing different books and takeaways from it. I'm going to read through some of the comments, see if you guys had any questions. And yeah, I'm sure there's a better way than having two different devices going at one time. But you said, let's see. Yes, everything comes easily. Ah, oh, Kristen, I'm so happy to hear you say that. You guys, I... I can't even tell you how incredible it was this year to not only feel like my own transformation, but being able to witness all of you, your guys' growth, and all the big things that you guys have been doing. You said, how crazy is it that we're headed to that same collective almost a century later? I know. We're lining up with the good, though. So crazy. You can't hide the truth forever. <laughs> Eventually we get smart enough to figure it out, right? 
Can you share which book you're reading? Yes, I am reading The Astonishing Power of Emotions by Abraham Hicks. Anything from them is absolutely incredible. He said, so true, our bodies believe what we believe. Yes, like when I started applying that concept with our bodies, not knowing the difference between reality and what we're actually, um, like fantasy versus reality. So like for working out, like for me, if I was working out longer than like 60 seconds, it was like, it was painful, you guys. <laughs> it was so hard to get motivated, like going to the gym and working out by myself. I'm more of like a classes person. And then I started realizing that what if I told myself a different story about working out? What if I just started telling myself that I really enjoy working out, that it feels so good to work out? And I started visualizing what was gonna happen from working out. And I decided that I only had to work out 20 minutes a day to re achieve the results that I wanted. What if I just started playing with that? So it's fun when you start deciding that there's something you wanna align with, even though when I first started speaking all of those things into existence, I was not an energetic match for it, right? I was still miserable working out and my current self was still not enjoying working out, but I kept telling myself, this feels good, this feels good. And I was only allowing that thought to be the dominant thought during my workout. And then eventually, every time I went to the gym, it got easier and easier and I started actually enjoying it. And then eventually I got to the point where I enjoyed it so much that the first thought that I have when I wake up is how am I gonna move my body? which I never thought was going to be something that was true for me. So it's really, really interesting. So your words are very powerful. And obviously for the words to make an impact, there has to be an emotional charge and a belief connection with it. But speaking them over time, because we don't actually know, your body doesn't know the difference between what you really are experiencing and what you believe that you're experiencing, when you're telling it that you're enjoying working out and you're having so much fun, then your body, you're like rewiring, re you're rewiring your past experiences of when you told your body that you hated what you were doing because your body is trying to protect your mind, your body is trying to protect you from being uncomfortable and being miserable. So if you have these past experiences of working out and not enjoying it, then you have to tell yourself a new story and to start telling yourself, it's okay, I can enjoy this. This is fun for me. This is, you know, all the good things, right? All the reasons why. I guess that's a really good topic for the new year. <laughs> it's a game changer. Start telling yourself a different story when you're working out, right? How much you love moving your body. And don't think you have to do it for hours at a time to have results. It's a mental game. It's a mental game, y'all, everything is. We are living in a world of energetics. It's like the game of Monopoly, but instead of collecting money and real estate, we're collecting frequencies and energetics, learning how to play it. Yay. Okay, then uh, you need to do a podcast. I could listen to this all day. Oh, thanks guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Never thought I'd be here. <laughs> I never thought I'd enjoy speaking, but you guys have made it so, so wonderful. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. I was just thinking about the very first course that I did. I was so fucking terrified, you guys. So scared to do it and just put myself out there. And the overwhelming response of love and encouragement that I received, not only from the people that were willing to trust me to take them along the, a, an experience of being a part of their journey, of growing and evolving, but also just everyone. You guys have just been so incredible. I think, you know, it can be terrifying to put yourself out there and try new things, but just know that each and every one of you are so greatly appreciated. And I can't thank you guys enough for being a part of my journey and allowing me to be a part of yours. You are so awesome. Thank you for always sharing your gifts and your learning. Yay. Thank you, Melanie. You're amazing. It was so fun. I enjoy the afterglow of working out. Yes. Exactly. Loved it. Yay, you guys. Wonderful. This is fun. Happy New Year. Lots of exciting things coming. We're getting a puppy. <laughs> I'm still in denial about it. Chaz like has never asked for anything in his entire life other than a big dog. <laughs> he grew up with the Bouviers. So I finally caved. It's been a secret that I've been keeping since like July or August that I was finally gonna do this. 
Um, so he finally got to find out Christmas Day and we get our puppy in February. So I'm going to start telling myself a new story about how I feel about big dogs and the responsibility of big dogs. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for him to have that experience and be excited and I'm sure I will love it. He said, when will you be offering another mini course? So for this year, I've been, you know, doing a lot of like, just creating, I'm rewriting the entire manifesting course, you guys, like just, I'm super excited. My, I have um, a new website that's being created. There's going to be lots of awesome new changes coming and I'm so excited to share it. I'm not sure when I will do another mini course. It was hard for me to do a mini course because I wanted to make sure that you had everything that you need. So for me, you know, so the, everyone that did the mini course ended up pretty much getting like the full content of the full course because I just, it was, I couldn't leave it out. There's a, a process and a journey that I take you through with the manifesting course. And like I said, the manifesting course is a combination of like Abraham Hicks, law of attraction of what you think that you're going to be getting but then we also take a very deep dive into the healing portion that is required for us to be able to create our new selves of who we really are meant to be becoming we have to allow ourselves to heal and to work through the things that we need to release to be able to create space to welcome in that new abundant future so I will absolutely be doing a manifesting course, a full manifesting course that is going to be like never before heard content that I can't wait to share with you guys. The ideas were just flowing yesterday. <laughs> and um, so I will be doing that. We'll be doing a full manifesting course. I don't know if I'm going to be releasing the manifesting course first or if I am going to actually release the brand new course that is the energetics of success which is where you'll be able to see the entire film behind the scenes of me reaching that really big goal of having a five-figure course launch and then i will be walking through the energetics of accomplishing anything it is that you set your mind to so it, it's not just for people that want to become life coaches or even a business owner it can be applied in anything Anything it is that you're trying to create abundance around, success around, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking vibe. <laughs> There's a couple F words for you. Uh, I try to have a little bit more filter when I'm public, but you guys get it. That's just who I am. And the throat chakra is open. So I am really, really, really excited to get to offer that. Um, but that one's going to be very, very, very deep. So... I don't know which one I'm going to do first. I've been really lit up about the idea of doing the new course because it's something new, right? But obviously my heart and soul is into the manifesting course. So I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know which one you think that we should do first. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. So happy new year, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and spending New Year's Day with me. I appreciate you all so much, sending you all my love and light, and I'm looking forward to doing this more. You guys have a wonderful day, and we will talk soon. Got all the places to end. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs>